Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 92. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guests in the building. My folks, they back, y'all. Introduce yourself to the audience. Sorry. Well, I guess it's ladies first. <laughs> it's your girl, Sa, um, aka Sunny Brick, co host of Sipping with Sammy podcast, editor and publisher of On the Scene magazine, um, owner of On the Scene Notary. You know, got all the, all the scenes. We on your scene. We ready. <laughs> yeah. And I am sipping with Sammy. Sam alone, Barstool Rug. If you ain't sipping with Sammy, you ain't sipping right. Please get your fucking life together. It'll be 2023 already. And you wouldn't have a shot yet. Copy that. Let's hit the rundown now. It is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram. Custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Custom jerseys, jackets, t-shirts, and sweatsuits. We can't customize and get your logo on whatever you need, but it will cost you extra. The jackets are one of one unless you buy three or four. The jerseys Ah. are also the same thing unless you got a couple of them. You pick the names, numbers, colors, and all of that. Uh, Football, basketball, baseball, and hockey all are available. Kids sizes and everything also. H2H Cleaning at H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company that is an Instagram only situation, a tri-state area situation. But if you make it worth my while, I will slide. We do roofing, plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, all of that good stuff. Carpet and flooring, you name it, we can make it happen. Uh, that's it, the rundown. Salute E-block and video. support all of that, please. Anybody salute, support all of that. And remind me, I might got a roofing joint for you. Copy that. Um, appreciate the love. Um, E Block Radio Network every Monday, two o'clock on the E Block Radio Network. GFT Radio, two o'clock every Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday is two one six to blend at twelve midnight, eight a.m. eight p.m. Thursday, wtnufilly.com. I say podcast radio network every Friday, ten a.m. and THC Media every Saturday at ten a.m. Sunday, still wide open, looking to make something happen, y'all. All right, episode ninety two. Got my folks in the building. These is family right here. Yeah, so, you know, get comfortable, baby. <laughs> why do people why do people always say I have to they working on their self after the relationship? Why can't you work on yourself while you're in a relationship? Talk to me, Sai. So I think it's um I think it's kind of multifaceted, right? I think that when you get into a relationship, um initially, you know, you focus a lot of attention on the other person. So it's in the subconscious. You don't understand it. For me, I'm a caring person, I'm a giver. So whenever I encounter or begin a relationship, um, I'm I'm more focused on them than me unintentionally. It's very it's not intentional at all. Um, it's unfortunate that people take the opportunity after relationship because I think it would behoove or be in everybody's best interest if they did it during the relationship. But once a relationship ends, you have the opportunity to kind of reflect. And that's when you think about you, because you no longer have, you know, somebody else to kind of put in the forefront. For me, that's the beginning of it. It's a lot more. I got a lot more to unpack too, but. That's the first part. I'm, we gonna get you there. Come on, Sam. Let's go. <laughs> I think um I think the idea of deal breakers works both ways. I think that sometimes you know how people be like, I could do anything but this, and then that gets crossed is usually what ends the situation, right? A lot of people think that they they'll, they'll take that for granted until that's a real thing, and then it's no longer about my feelings about what you said. Now I really have to, like Sob said, dig into what part I played or or didn't play in a situation. So I think that once that deal is broken, sometimes you start trying to restructure your paperwork. Mm-hmm. Okay. See, I would say here is like, like Sob said, it's better to do this thing inside the relationship. That way we can grow it and prosper and make it move forward. In Which any relationship which uh, every relationship takes communication. Two, three-year-olds playing is communication on this one is mine and this one is yours. Don't put this in your mouth. Don't put that in your mouth. Before before, before kids could talk, they communicated. Copy. So it's always always about making them strong self-evaluations. If you can't Mm -hmm. look in the mirror and make the strong right evaluation about yourself, if if I look in the mirror and tell you, yo, I'm a six six foot, 170 pound nigga, it's a lie. It's not the truth. That's not what the situation is. You know what I'm saying? So if you can't be real with yourself, then how are you going to be real with me in this relationship? 
most people don't want to be accountable for how this shit fucked up and you know how is it that we can make this thing work? Because like Sai said, when you started off, yeah, the relationship is kind of always about the other person because it's like, how do we fit together? How do I fit myself into this situation with them to see if we got to fit or if we don't got to fit? And people do all of those things after the relationship where they say, well, how can I get better? What did I? What do I need to change? Do I need to change anything? Am I just great? Is everything your fault? Is nothing my fault? When anything breaks down, it's never always on one side. It's always on both of us. We well, don't all look thing- at it like, you know what I'm saying? You what to... What you was about to say, Sav? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, because I had my little notes that I started writing, and you see right there, accountability was the first thing that I wrote, and it's so interesting mm-hmm. that you said that, because I think that that's most important. And I think that is what most people are lacking, because, and I don't want to see most people, but a lot of people lack accountability. It's so easy to point the finger at other people, right? But I it's feel like for a lot of people, it's, it's more challenging to realize that when you point that one finger, all those fingers are pointing back to you. You got to think about the role that you play and the part that you play, right? Exactly. And I don't think that a lot of people are, um, it's just not easy to do, regardless if it's a lot of people or not. It's just not an easy task. It's just not an easy task. I um, think so that, I think that plays the biggest role. Go ahead, bro. I think sometimes we rely on catchphrases as crutches as a community. And there's certain things that happen where people will say stuff like, and we talk about accountability all the time on the podcast, tapping the tap sip with Sammy. We love accountability conversations when it's me and Sam. But um, this is why I love my thing, man. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even had to tell him to throw the plug in there. You know what I'm saying? Pay talent like my man Sam. He's already locked, loaded, and ready with it. <laughs> Always. But one thing that people love to do because it's common to do is say, well, y'all know who, how I am. Y'all know, you know who I am. You know that I'm like this. And they're identifying a bad trait that they're not willing to work on. Copy. You see what I'm saying? So just because I love you doesn't mean that that's something that I want to deal with the rest of my life if it's something that's fixable. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't but have a lot to. Of one of us should have to accept on, the shortcoming. But you met me how I grow. am. Well, damn, I thought we was growing. Right. Bullseye. We're not all growing. <laughs> right. When you say that, when you say, well, you know how I am, how I am and then what you're saying is I'm supposed to accept that you have a shortcoming that you're never going to work on. You don't ever plan on. Because you already know you have. You identified (laughs) it. You pinpointed it and told me, just be cool with it. Yeah. You've been fucking up the rent money for the last three years, so I'm supposed to just be cool with you always fucking up the money? So what happens when we got the mortgage money now? Am I supposed to be just cool with you fucking up the bread? Because that's what you Am I supposed to want to get a house with you? Right. Copy. Right. I was about to say too, another thing, the other, the second note that I have so far was, um, and it's a little, it's related, a um, little sidetrack, but multitasking, right? So people think that multitasking is like, um, you know, it's kind of ideal. And when you think about it, you might be getting something done, but how effective or efficiently are you getting those things done, right? So if you're in a relationship and you're focusing most of the attention on your partner, which is not a good or a bad thing, it just is what it is. How, how much valid. opportunity, how much, huh? I said everything's about balance, yeah. Right, how much opportunity, exactly, you have to find that balance. And that's the other thing I was going to say, that's all about balancing, you know, like how you have to find opportunity to focus on whatever your interests are, your partner, yourself, whatever it be, you know what I mean? So I think that's another facet of it, too. See, something that uh, my man Nah, shout out to my man Nah, was on last week's episode from Life Be Life and Podcast. He Hello. said, um, he, was talking about, he was talking about something on his podcast, and he was saying, do you have a lot going on or do you he like it's the difference in having a lot going on or you just doing too much mm-hmm. if you listen to all of the shit that i got going on you know like all of us we got a long rundown if we want to go through these rundowns <laughs> you know what I'm saying? we busy and niggas is doing shit but are you really doing shit or are you just you know what i'm saying getting yourself caught up with shit to do when you ain't getting nothing accomplished but same thing like you like- that's the Good. other side of accountability um, when it comes to people that's doing shit is being intentional. Why are you doing shit? Mm-hmm. Is, it a means to a, is it a means to an end? Does it create a funnel? Mm-hmm. You that's see where what I was saying? going. <laughs> Does it have a purpose? You know what I mean? For me, everything I do is purpurposeful. Even when I go out, like I used to be on a, I mean, on a scene literally from Sunday to Sunday, <laughs> right? But now I party with a purpose and whatever that may be and whatever right that may be. You know what I'm saying? So just everything that you do has to be with intention and purpose, regardless of what it is. You know what I mean? I think yep. that's important. Because like, but it's it's like she said, like being on the scene, being mm-hmm. on the scene could be anything. You know what I mean? 
but she gives direction to what she means by on the scene. There's a lot of people that you can see you follow them online and you'll be like, oh, they be in the mix. Yeah, but they... Uh, you right. know what I mean? Would they Give make a prime example? Give <laughs> a prime example. <laughs> there. So, uh, you know me, Thousand Hustles. We at we at one gig doing the Roots picnic, and I'm at the door. <laughs> you got to come through. You this is the door you got to come through to get uh, your credentials. Right. Which means I'm gonna see everybody. Which means That's you should have told me to pull up. Never mind. No, I heard you say that on the John that you were supposed to go because the podcast brothers was your folks and all that, but you didn't come. I'm saying I'd be tapped in. Um, no, I was right bro, there. Say that, bro. <laughs> Yo, Sai, but, he got me right. But the joints, that, the wristbands used to be the gray and black joints. I ran out of all of them because I worked the roots picnic, and everybody who came through that joint, who yo, you, I'm on you. you that's should. how we. That's how we and got the green and white. My man is right here with me. He spit. He don't talk to one person. I'm on any and everybody top come through this door. The young boy who's my man right there. Look at him. He's locked in. I love it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't play about you, bro. Copy that. My man who's doing security over here, the young boy is like 19. Young boy do beats. Young boy is on it. Young boy, yo, look, you remember the DM from last week? That was me. Oh, shit. That was your beat and all of that. But my other man, like I said, he's spit and he's letting all these opportunities just go right by. He's not saying nothing to nobody. He's not capitalizing on this situation. He's not looking at this shit like this is a live situation of I need to work on this shit. Because if you see it's three of us over here and we all got different shit going on. Why are you the only one that's not saying nothing? Why are you now, the one what I would do, jumping all over now, that? You're right. But with the, the second part of that is there's always a possibility that he was standing there saying, damn, I'm not prepared. Next time, I'm gonna come with this. See, it's like people first time going to South by Southwest when they see people walking down the street with 30 people with their shirts and their banners, they like, Oh, we ain't come heavy enough, and then they go back right the next year. You know what I mean? Copy now, I'm not I would, saying I he can... shouldn't have took more advantage, but sometimes you know, people are more cerebral than others. But see, that's why the conversation we just had before the show is, look, bro, I know you got the experience doing what this other situation is. <laughs> so let me reach out and tap into you and say, what don't I know that I'm not asking? What am I not finding out? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Know enough Absolutely. to know that you need to be prepared for whatever situation that, that you walk into. Same that way part. like you just threw it in there about, yo, we talked about this on the Sipping with Sammy podcast. You go straight into your situation because you mm -hmm. come prepared. You know what I'm saying? And you know me, if it's any situation, like I always tell people, this is any of these situations is like cracking on chicks. Anytime I was at the bar and I, you might go 0 for 5, 0 for 6 tonight, it's not going to stop me from going at number 7. Because what's she right. going to say? You know what I'm saying? Right. right. So I worked in always... retail before. We got to greet everybody. Hey, man, listen. <laughs> and that was for was somebody else's money. So That's what I'm saying. That's why we, you know what I'm saying, custom hustle in our own whole situations these days. <laughs> yeah, that part. Shout out, shout out the on the scene notary, by the way. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out, oh, definitely we... on the scene notary, man. You already know it's important. Like you said, following your own lane, following your own thing. I was, I was in a couple situations with document. I needed some documentation, or people needed documentation, or people actually losing houses because they documentation not right. And um, I found it was real necessary to start that, start on the scene notary. So we help people with wills. Um, D transformations. I mean, I just this my divorce decree. It, it, whatever you need, they need life changing situations. Good. Need you. I was about Absolutely. to say you, you're glossing over these like they're not major situations. No, this is the yeah. major. This is yeah. no, this is the pivotal points in people's lives. Yeah. Right. 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 How many people That's you heavy. know with a, How many people you know with an active will? Like you know what I'm saying. Exactly. We exactly. fight the as a culture, will versus we fight yeah. against wills. Which is stupid. You have young men that are rich and know that they're volatile and say, well, I make enough money where it's not a thing. I don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. If that girl yeah. ain't your wife, if that girl ain't your wife, she won't be having access to nothing. Correct. You know <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't make it to 35 to realize that Christian Rock wasn't really your type, then what are we talking about? That's what I'm saying, man. That's why you're saying <laughs> anything, ha anything happens, she can get access to it all. <laughs> it get vicious, man. Right. It get vicious. So salute the side for that, man. Appreciate that, bro. Always, you know me. So <laughs> tell me this now: Was there ever a relationship where you stepped back and said, 
I, I, this Jeezy joint, uh, Therapy for My Soul. I didn't even know this shit had came out. I heard this shit the first time. It was like, this is one of the best joints I ever heard. Because, like, God damn, he murdered this joint. And he said on the joint, I would say it's all him, but it wouldn't be fair. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been in a situation where it was like, damn, now that I did step back and have reevaluated, it wasn't all on one person, and maybe it was on me, and maybe I could have played that different because it'll help me out in this next situation. I've never been in a situation where I completely thought it was the other person's fault when it didn't work out, honestly. But one thing that has always been my comfort thing is that I'm always the one that's trying to communicate. So my I'm reactive. I'm a Gemini. I can go either way. So with, if, if, if I start doing things as a result of then I don't necessarily feel as bad, but I know that that contributed to the demise too at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. That doesn't sound um, self-serving enough. And like, I'm trying to be honest. Yeah. Nah, you're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, it's been more of um, personal relationships and not uh, not physical relationships, not physical like with others, you know, what a mate type of thing. It's more of um, a type of friendship relationship that I have well, to be more yet. accountable well, for. This conversation that we have in is a general conversation, not just... Right, right. Like, no, I just want to distinct yeah, it because they actually, like, like what Sam said, like, so with any, like, personal relationship or, like, with, like a, a relationship, I don't think that I've ever, and I'm always accountable. That's the first thing I always think about is what role did you play? My mom taught me that when I used to always get in trouble, the first thing she said was, what role did you play? You know what I mean? So that's yeah. something I always think about. It's, it's at the forefront for every situation, for everything that I do. Um, so in, in all of my relationships, you know, I, I really think that I, I don't think that I've ever really thought of what I could have done differently. But in some of my um, friendships or other relationships that were not um, built on personal shit, <laughs> um, you know, I think that it was ways that I could have been a little bit more. Um, there was things I could have done. I could have done differently because a long time, you know. It was just, I would just think that things is not going on my track, not my way, but on my track, that it is what it is. You know what I mean? Not being empathetic or sympathetic to other things, other people. Like before I had kids, I didn't understand when somebody said, I can't come because I have kids, I, I don't have a babysitter. I didn't understand it. I used to be like, oh, all right, she can't come. Sorry for you. Now, <laughs> I understand. It's completely Yo, different. Yo, we wasn't even like that. And I can speak for height. <laughs> no, I was like that because but you gotta understand. I just said I was on the scene. I was on all kinds of scenes, so it didn't matter what it was. I can't sit here and not go or sit about what you're doing. I can't. That's not my life. I can't do that. But now, like I said, it's about the empathy of it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now, like, when you're in that place, being, yeah. like before, some before you lose somebody close to you, you don't understand what somebody's going to until you have that loss. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't understand a breakup so you have a breakup. You know what I'm saying? So for me. That was the biggest, one of the biggest things for me, because I experienced loss early and all the breakups early, but I didn't have kids early. So I didn't understand that until, you know, later. So while we're talking about, (laughs) hold on real quick, while we're talking about relationships ending and who's at fault, we also have to realize when we start talking more about mental health, that some relationships are supposed to end or have pauses. And it's okay. And it's fine. Our relationships you know have an expiration date. That was an episode. We got to be more passed. realistic about that. We can't act like just because it's over that it's over forever. And we can't act like just because it's a thing that it's a thing forever. We have to I give ourselves, we have to give each other grace in that in that way. For sure. I think. That, that's all about the growth of the situation. Just because we worked at 22 don't mean we work at 32. Um, something that you was just touching on now, Si. Bore uh oldest daughter, my niece. Shout out the boy, my guy. Yeah, changed, my out, whole, changed my whole perspective with kids because now I was the first kid that was, I'm the youngest. So she's I know the how first it is kid when we get our first, our first little girl and it ain't your girl, but it's our first. She, I know how it is. But she's the first that I get all of the experiences with. So mm-hmm. before I have kids, like she's saying, like, mm-hmm. what you mean you ain't got no babysitter? Oh, now I get why you ain't got no babysitter. You know what I'm saying? All of that clicks for me with having a niece before I even have kids. So that once I get to having kids, I understand a whole lot of this better. But that, like you said, it's experiences. Without these experiences, you don't have anything to com- co- to compare it to. See, it's different too for me. Had homies, they had a lot of baby moms, so it was having just like, the, but she was <laughs> she, was in, the, she was in the house though. You know what I'm saying? And like That's she in saying. my room taking a shit, and I'm like, yo, what's that smell? Right. I'm not about to change her. Right. <laughs> And even for that, it's also about support systems too, right? Because I was an aunt when I was 10. My sister had kids when I was young, but she had a support system. My mom, my cousins, my aunts, my this, my that. 
And when you don't have that, it's different. You absolutely look at it differently. Oh, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. single moms, and I'm not even a single mom. I'm married, but my husband works different. It's just different for me. You know what I'm saying? I understand it. Shout out to 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 parents. You know, mothers, fathers, whoever, aunts, uncles, sky parents. The Shout village out to all because takes. it takes the village. Exactly, it mm -hmm. takes the village. It takes the village. Absolutely. Now, uh, this is where I asked y'all this because this was something that I'm gonna be like, we're gonna be honest here. You know, we in a safe space here. I all I the way that I started looking at things different was getting married, and in different discussions and things with my wife, it would always be like, all right, well, it can't always be her fault. So try to see it from her perspective. But I would only do that in a relationship with my wife is try <laughs> to figure it out from both sides. In a relationship with anybody else, I wasn't trying to figure it out from both sides. The thing about me is I'm an extremist. I'm going to go a thousand miles an hour. If we doing whatever, we doing it. We can't half do it. You know what I'm saying? We can't just kind of be doing it. We doing it. That's why I never trapped. Because I was going to jail <laughs> too fast. You was on the express train to the prison. Couldn't do a, couldn't do a Bali. I need four ounces. Um, <laughs> so I know that about me. And now you start to reevaluate the situations. That's why I brought up the Jeezy statement. Like I would say it's all them, but it wouldn't be fair. Because now you start to look at it and it's like somebody might not be giving you what you want in this situation, but how are you delivering that message to them? How are you communicating that? Are you being like Sam just like we talked about, this is how they are and this is what they are, and they're not looking to change that. It's like, are you saying, all right, well, I'm gonna either accept that or I'm gonna say that that ain't cool. But it took me years to implement that into my own game. Cause like I was the look, I know I'm going hundred miles an hour and I'm giving it my all. Like Sam mm -hmm. said, yeah, I'm the nigga that's sending out the phone call, the text. I might hit y'all sometime, yo, just yo, check it in. You good? Ain't heard from you anymore. I don't even want nothing out of you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just about, yo, is y'all cool? Is everything good over there? Is the kids good? But, you know but your wife becomes your navigation system, like no. Just because you move in 100 miles and you go 100 at everything, you found somebody to compliment to help you direct that, that energy. So then, then you can put your guard down because you found somebody that matches. Like, I'm not married, but I know even when I was running around crazy with a bunch of women, only my girlfriend deserved the argument. I'm not arguing with none of the rest of you. My girlfriend, we can go back and forth. I care how she feels. The, so you got to some, you got to the person whose feelings you care about. See, look, this is a behind the scenes peek, and I never really do this. I tell mm -hmm. her all the time, you don't know how much weight you being my wife holds. Mm -hmm. That if you say stop. I'm going to stop to listen to why you're telling me this. Yep. Anybody else can say this and it'll be like, fuck, what you talking about? But if you say, I need to talk to you, everything gets dropped because this is you. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It'll be mm -hmm. on the same tip where it's like, you, she, she, I'm from my, I mean, just, just from my perspective, the way she look at it is like, he don't stop when nobody else telling him to stop. So why the fuck is he going to stop when I tell him to stop? But I always tell her, you my wife, if you need whatever, it's whatever. Like you know what I'm saying, I made a conscious decision to put you in a position of prominence for a reason. Copy. Right. I didn't. You know what I'm saying, just pick anybody <clears throat> to be my wife. I didn't right, choose I anybody you. to get. I didn't choose just anybody to give my dad's name. You know what right. I'm saying that part, bro. That name is big for me, yo. My name means something in West Philly. I don't know about the rest of you, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like I act different about that name thing, man. That's what I'm saying. We're we going to get there. That's something new in the podcast. We're going to get there. I got y'all. Yes. <laughs> but, like, yeah, like, man, that shit. Look, you see, like, that name means so much. My journal on here. Let me let me change that journal. Hold on. My Check name is the way to put it now. <laughs> There's a good <laughs> reason I run by. There's a reason I got so many aliases. <laughs> right? <laughs> that government different. All right, now, this is what I need from y'all. <laughs> Sam. Mm -hmm. What's the wild? What's the wildest shit side ever said on the podcast? <laughs> I think it was last week. Or two I was about to say, wasn't it the last pod? Uh oh, there we go. What did you say, yo? What was this clip? Because I clipped it. It was crazy. It was. We was like, shout out to Stormy P. We was out. We was on. We was on with us. Oh, Stormy you got King. a high speed chase with your pop. She got a high speed chase with her dad in her first car with her little boyfriend. So in order to deflect her dad, she went to the library and got a bunch of books. 
<laughs> like he didn't just chase me. Like he don't like know. He didn't just see you. I would no, but My we really almost died. Was, you don't if get you it. You was around, his like, son. He caved your chest in for that. <laughs> yo, but you don't get it. Like we really um, like I've been in a, I've been in real chases before too with the other people. Like it was like that. Like yo, you don't understand. I'm like now. I'm like I was a real dickhead for that. Like <laughs> like he saw you. He knows your car. It wasn't my car. It was bull car. But he knew bull car. And he know you. And I was outside of my house, like. You damn sure better know ball. You damn sure better know ball car if you gonna be messing with my daughter. I damn, damn sure know what that. I, I damn sure know what that Nissan looked like. My dad, Muslim, started out with the SOI fruit of his lamb. You, you ain't no bull. Like that was the yeah, thing. That's, that's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so that's why I came back with the books this big. Like now, me dad. Am I am me. That Man, might not be studying. That's the most recent. <laughs> Cause Saf Saf give it up, but that's the most recent joint that I could think of. That was hilarious. That and the mermaid drowning was crazy. <laughs> now reverse the question. Saf, what's the craziest shit? What's the wildest shit Sam has said? I think every episode was Sam is wild, to be honest. But <laughs> <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I know real, what he don't have no filter. That's the thing, cause I think that's why we work so well together, cause he really don't have a filter. Um. What's the wildest shit you said? Like, yo, and I it's think because I'm super comfortable with Sav, so I'll talk to Sav. Like, you know how Shay said, "You think it talk to me like I'm a whole nigga?" Like, yeah, like we ain't got a trip. That's how it would be. That's how it would be. So <laughs> that's bro, a comfortable the situation. That's them comfortable that situations. That's what you look for. You know what I'm saying? When you feel like you ain't got to be guarded and. Like measured in what you're saying. That's what yeah, you're like it's for. not even tactical. Like it's like we straight, you know, we got our plan, but we just go for us because we feel to say comfortability. You know what I mean? That awareness, that familiarity with it. So mm -hmm. we just go for us all time. But I say a lot of crazy shit, man. Everything you say is crazy. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what? what mean? Tell me this now. What made y'all start doing sipping with Sam? Um, sitting with Sammy was a idea that I had when I had an opportunity to, um, an internet radio station back in the day, a while back, told me I could have a radio show and I could do it remotely. And I was like, well, that's perfect. Cause I was running around too much, doing too much to be somewhere every, whatever day at a certain time. You know what I mean? Every Tuesday at six. <laughs> yeah. But when they told me remotely, I was like, so that means that I could go to your bar or your man cave or your playground and drink with you and have it on the air. So that's where the, 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 the premise of it came from. It took a few years for me to link up with Kay. Shout out to Kay from Fine Productions. And um, really get in the media all together before that to where it became a real thing. And as soon as it became a thing, I'm like, well, I need a co-pilot for like, you know, a majority of this stuff. Like it's certain things that you need somebody you could trust that's on board with you. I don't need it for everything. And the only the first person I thought of was Sock, like literally the first person. But what I did was I swindled her. I told her I needed her to come on and just, you know, shoot an episode with me. And I knew she was gonna love it. So before I could before I could tell her that it was her show, she hit me up and was like, bro, that was so fun. We should do that again. I was like, nigga, it's half yours. What you wanna do? <laughs> so all right, now we spin this to you. Sorry, what what made what made you gravitate towards it? So uh I guess finishing or, or you know, completing where he started, um, when we did it, so I've, I've grown up in media. Um, my dad has a newspaper, his dad had a newspaper, his dad, I'm like a fourth fourth generation editor uh, directly. I don't know why I had to think about it, I should know that. But <laughs> I'm a fourth generator editor and publisher. Um, and even beyond that, that um, <laughs> now I say it all the time. That's why I was like, it's this damn Casamigos right here. That's, That's why I said it's the cup. <laughs> <laughs> but and beyond that, even beyond that, from, slavery, from the days of slavery, um, I'm a direct descendant of an editor and publisher that was, um, dedicated to the abolishment of slavery and had his publication, The Liberator, William Lloyd Garrison from 1829 to 1865. So uh -huh. media and saying all that is to say media is in my blood, it's in my spirit, it's in my passion, it's my purpose. And when bro called me the one time, you know, the first time he called me, it was just, I thought I was sitting down with him, you know, I have on the scene magazine, so we discussed that, but we family that it just felt so comfortable. I called him, like he said, he was like, oh, it's yours, what's up? And we just went from there. And because I really have a deep passion and purpose for it, um, I didn't think of anything else to say but yes. There was no 
thought about it. I didn't even have to think. There was no thought about it. Um, I love what we do. I love his platform or our platform that is, you know, it's very laid back and it's free. Um, it's a conversational um, aspect. Um, our guests, our guests always tell us, I mean, literally, I'm going to say 80 to 90 percent of the time. I think the other 10 to 20 is just they don't have the opportunity or don't say it. But they tell us that we had the most comfortable platform. It was like, yo, it's been like, and we got some big people. I mean, we have Grammy nominated, Grammy award winners on our platform. You know, we have some really big Talk people. Shit. And they really talk about us and tell us, you know, how comfortable we make them. And, um, you know, like I said, it's, we, we, we play off each other. We like the opposite in so many different ways that, you know, I feel I think that we bring what's, what's needed to the podcast. All right. She now. said that better than I could have. No bullshit. Yes. Thank you. All she the Grammy she... shit, I'd have skipped over all of that. You, you, you <laughs> ordered it. You ordered it. See, I love you. you. See, that was the, that's the weed and the cup hitting you together. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, bro, literally, I do. We we run around. We never so talks about that kind of stuff, though. Yeah, you like know. that's not that's not what be sticking out to me. You know what I'm saying? But you got to think about it too, though. Even though it don't stick out, you got to think these people been on. The reason I said it is that a Grammy Award winner, a nominated person, has to think about the platforms that they've been on, not in substance or content, but even just in volume, right? No, we talking so about people that have been on Hot 97, been on Correct. 105, been on Power Breakfast 99. Club, all it. They've been on all, all it. it. You know, yeah, if they're gonna tell us how comfortable they, we make them feel, to me, that's a nod. That's a nod I take. No, nah, and this is no, this I is one of them it. things that this is one of them things that I will always say. Uh, this was another joint, Yo Gotti joint. Can I speak out loud? Can I tell myself I'm proud? Yeah. Shit, mm -hmm. bragging. Mm -hmm. If you out here, y'all two are people. Y'all know that I fuck with both of y'all since the first time we met. Yeah, and cool. love you to that. People who out here who bust their ass to make shit happen. Don't never let nobody like. I don't really want to be saying it like that. I don't want it to sound like that, man. Fuck that. It sound like that. It is that because I'm busting just, my ass. This shit happen. Like ain't I nobody deal, handing me this shit. That's no, why I, I tell deal with people. people if you so sometimes I, niggas, I forget, I forget they accomplish now, If you fucking Google me, they got pictures of me up there. Right. That part. Any and everybody can't say that shit. You know what I'm saying? That part. And I work hard to make that shit happen. Right. Simple and Family Podcast got 180 some episodes, about five concert series, and some more shit under, and 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 still going, and we ain't missed a week yet. Like That's what I I'm understand saying, talk all that, that shit, bro. But I right. be and so you know, on the same magazine, got that popping SEO popping every time anybody in that magazine you put their name in. That's the first thing that come up. Oh no, we, we, coming, right you, we coming right to you. We coming right to you. We coming right to you next. We coming Let's right go. to you. I got you. You already know. <laughs> I was already thinking we, we got that. We got that. No, but we, we we but all of this is just like we fight to do things the right way. Right. So certain things come with that. Like like it's so many. We've won a few awards, and it's plenty of awards that we've been nominated for that was a blessing. And I'll be having to be reminded. of of that because the winners in the work ultimately with me mm -hmm. like i want i want to keep building and i appreciate everything that come with it but i don't judge nobody by what they want i judge them by their treatment copy because mm -hmm. oh, what you won was just you know what I'm saying somebody somebody else's opinion on the top one category and just like you said in the work i got something for you at the end of this episode that will tie right in beautifully with that but we got to go to on the scene magazine before we wrap things up Saying that's on episode 92 on the scene magazine. Let's talk a little bit about the magazine. Sure. Um, so on the scene magazine is a positive um digital-based platform, um, urban digital lifestyle magazine. We have everything from entertainment to education, sports, fashion, finance, music. Um, but everything is from a positive perspective. Um, as anybody can see, you turn on the TV, you turn on your phone, you turn on, you walk outside your door, you're inundated with negativity. However, when you walk outside your door, you also inundated with, you can be inundated with positive things. And that's why we take it so personal to make sure that we deliver positive information. Um, you know, um, one of our latest editions, we just display, uh, just um, published last week, Lena Horne, you know, shout out to Lena Horne. She was an amazing activist, let alone actress. And for, you know, civil definitely rights. Definitely a legend for, for those us. who don't know. And yes. people don't know. And so she's, I think, the first Black woman. She is the first Black woman to have a Broadway theater named in her name. And so that was just mm -hmm. unveiled two weeks ago. So we display information like that. Shout out to Jimmy the Saint. We did a review, a film review on his movie. Um, we do so many things that um, it's just positive. Everything is from a positive perspective. I'm sorry. Which movie? Um, Nobody's Son. Yep. Shout out to Nobody's Son. Shout out to Son of the 215. Correct. Yes. We got Son of the 215 in there. Um, but everything we do is from a positive perspective because there's so many resources out there 
um, that we aspire to be um, just, I aspire to be a, a, a walking resource. And that's what our magazine is. Our magazine is a digital resource. Anything that you need and want um, should be there for you. And if it's not, you reach out to us and we're going to make sure that we can help in any way. Because my passion and purpose is to be that resource. If somebody's Man. looking to get a feature with on the same magazine, on, how would they do it? I told you this on the episode. You are a walking resource. No you more did. Aspiring. You did say that. <laughs> not, we're not aspiring no more. You that. You right. You right. Somebody looking to get on. Somebody looking to get on on the scene magazine to get a feature or something like that. How would they go about that? If they just want to read the magazine, how would they go about that? So they can go to our website. It's www.onthescenemagazine.com. Um, and we, you can, our emails there, you can reach us through there. Um, all of our contact information is through there. We're also on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, on the same magazine. And that's the first step. Um, you can DM us on Instagram. You can email us. Our phone number is there. You can call us. You can do anything you want, but we are absolutely open to, um, new articles, you know, new information to, to expose. It's all about exposure. So, so necessary. So, so when we do the piece entitled, this is how you hustle on hype, you know what I'm saying? I'll go to onthescenemagazine.com and yep. make sure that you check out the article. Correct. Now, this is something new that I'm doing on the podcast. Before we wrap up the episode, I'll let the guests know if I really fucks with you. Appreciate you for coming on. And tell me this now. When you hear my name, when you hear the name Hype, what is it that you think? Sob, we'll start with you first. <laughs> Everybody keeps saying that. <laughs> oh, I got custom, go ahead, bro. You go first. Like custom think hustle world. Different. You know when you hear that, that name, Hype, hustle what world. You think? Oh, yeah. Hype always makes me think of hyphy. Okay. All right. No. Not somebody else did this. <laughs> when you Hold hear on. my name, you go. Oh, my bad. Explain it to now, me. Now, when you hear my name, if somebody say something about me, they say something about hype, you think instantly what? Oh, a great, a great fucking human being. I just think of an awesome guy. I never think of like, like, uh, deeper than that. You'll probably be a facilitator. Okay. Because said this about me. Yeah, because between your last situation and the current situation, I see how you move. I see how you reach out. I see how you resource. Yeah. I think you would be a facilitator. I think that's a good word, but a great, a great human being, first and foremost. That's my support. Sorry, you have something else you want to throw in there? Yeah, I wasn't done. That was the first thing. And I said, <laughs> I didn't say hustle because for you, like ever since I ever met you, like you, you've always, and hustle is not, um, mm -hmm. I say that you're a go-getter. Um, I see that. So for me, I just see resource. Again, just something I see in myself. I see resourceful. I see, mm -hmm. um, I think of somebody who um, uses what they got or might not even don't have, go get it and get what they want. So that's what I see from you. I see for you, like, it might be symbolic, but like literally and, phys and, and figuratively, I call you a force, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not a small person in, in figure, but nor in mind, body, spirit, move, none of that. You know what I'm saying? Very big thing, very big picture thinker. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But you act on absolutely. it too, because a lot of people, myself included, like it's so many things. You know, I had, a, I ain't even gonna get into it, but I had something, an idea ten years ago. Somebody else did it, and now they rich, right? I should have did it. It's about execution, right? And so mm -hmm. I see you executing. It's about not about big thinking, big moving, and you doing it. Conversations well, without execution is just us talking. It's one of correct. the things one I always thing, tell people. One thing that I could say that both of you guys have in common is that when y'all say that y'all are, are, are attempting or making a maneuver to do something, I believe that it's going to be done and that it should be done. It's always with the right intention. It always has the right things behind it. And that's not what, that, that's 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 rare. Yeah, shit. I called Sam a year ago about something I'm trying to do next year. <laughs> you know what I'm we just talked about it. Trust me, about I talked to Sam before Honesty Magazine was Honesty Magazine. So, <laughs> and and we've been in publishing for uh, twelve years now. So that's, not, that's, <laughs> not also, that's twelve years, girl. That's not close. That's a seventh grader. You on your way to high school, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I was just saying that to say, like you said, you told him about something that you want to do next year. I talked about that for years before I did it. You know, mm -hmm. years before I did it. So. 
So, all right, y'all. I appreciate y'all coming on. Make sure y'all tune into the Sipping with Sammy podcast. Yep. This is episode 92 of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.